Hi everyone. Happy Friday. It's great to see you here today and I'm really glad that we could come together to talk about uh, neighborhood collaborations. This is something that I have a particularly um, passionate interest about from my own experience with community leagues and I will talk a little bit about that later on. First of all, I wanted to just really get into a little bit about why neighborhood collaborations are so important for community leagues. My perspective is that community leagues are the leaders of the neighborhood. You are the people that the residents of the neighborhood will turn to if they have a problem, if they have a need, if they have an interest, or if they have an ability that they want to share. The community league is truly those leaders. And as a leader, my perspective is you have a responsibility to get to know your neighborhood. And that goes beyond the people that live there. That goes into faith organizations, cultural organizations, talks about businesses, um, business owners, entrepreneurs, people who are looking to your neighborhood as a place to establish themselves. I would, I would say as league leaders, you would, you would have a, a role to play in meeting with these folks and meeting with them not at your board meetings, but taking them for coffee, talking to them about the neighborhood, talking them about who it is that lives in this neighborhood, what it is that they like, what it is that they need. You know that as someone that sits on the board of your community league, and you have ex expertise and experience in the neighborhood that is so unique and so valuable. And, and I want to encourage you to continue to share that knowledge. Business owners will appreciate it. Faith communities and cultural groups need it. They want to be embedded in the community. Oftentimes our faith organizations that are in our communities draw people from across the city. And that's okay. But we know that they are part of our community and how can they, how can they get to know us? How can they um, serve the needs of the neighborhood? Those are all things that you need to bring to that table. And your knowledge and, your, and what you bring is valuable. I want to give you a couple of examples of um, personal examples that I've had in my time working with my neighborhood. For a number of years, I had met with a couple of the uh, faith organizations, the church leaders that were in my neighborhood. And what we realized quickly was that they drew people from across the city, but they all felt a need to connect in with the community that they were. They were worshiping in. My need as a neighbor in the neighborhood was that my children were attending a school that also was drawing people from across the city. And oftentimes my kids didn't know the kids in the neighborhood and didn't have opportunities to meet kids in the neighborhood. Um, this is where Green Shack programs are really great. But what we decided to do as well was to offer a summer camp program. And so as we gathered together with uh, two churches and the community league and we came together to offer summer camp for three summers we did it. And it was a great opportunity to connect with the youth in our neighborhood, um, to bring them up and help hold them up as leaders for this camp. Um, the leadership of those churches really stepped up in planning and providing a lot of the resources for the camp. The uh, community league was there with the space um, with the insurance, with the advertising, with drawing people in. It was, it was a great few years that we did it. It was a tremendous amount of work, but what it really showed to the community was this is, this is our neighborhood. We want our kids to play together, but these are people that are, that are working in uh, churches that are in our neighborhoods and they want to know us and we should know them. We have a lot to give and a lot to offer. So that was one example. Another example is, is meeting with different business owners um, over the course of the time that I was on the board. And that was really important because we were able to communicate to some of the business owners some of the things that they could do to change their business that might meet the needs of more people in the neighborhood. We were also part of a pilot project, which again um, came about because of advocacy to the city to say, you know what, we have these these business areas in our neighborhood and they're falling apart. And, and we, need, um, we need something that has more life. We need something that looks better, that we can have some pride in, that people will shop at because they feel safe going to these places. 
And so it was a collaboration with the city, but the business owners were integral to that because, because they knew that the neighbors were the ones that were going to come and use their business the most. Sure, they draw people from across the city too, but they live and inhabit in the neighborhood. So as community leagues, I really wanted to end on take ownership of your neighborhood. This You are the leaders of your neighborhood. Your role is to support those neighbors, to get to know those neighbors, but that goes beyond residents. It goes into businesses, organizations, cultural groups, nonprofit organizations. Um, show them your neighborhood is made of. There is so much to offer and all of those organizations have a lot to offer your neighbors too. So look forward to having future conversations about this and uh, hope you all have a wonderful uh, family day.